Hello everyone, this is Louise Tunis and welcome back to my channel. That smells like coffee in the evening. That's so unforeseen. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some memory methods or memory techniques that I find really really useful. Because you know, especially in medical courses, how hard it is to memorize all these things or to just absorb all this information that you just need to know all these charts and all these things. So I just hope that this video really helps you. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe and let me know down below in the comments. Let's get started. My first method is sound alike, look alike. This means that you use visual cues or audio cues to help you remember certain or associate certain words with certain definitions. So this is the usual term and then you have a definition and you find the keyword that you need to know. Or more commonly what I do is, um, for example, oxidation happens at the anode and reduction happens at the cathode. So anode, oxidation, they both start with vowels and cathode and reduction, they both start with consonants. So you just have to find the similarities between the things that you're trying to associate with each other. Another example, in sphingolipid metabolism diseases, um, for example, Farber's disease affects the enzyme ceramidase. So Farber-Sir, Farber-Sir. It's Fabrice and Crab's diseases. I remember them as fab crab. They affect alpha and beta galactosidase. So in the order of fab crab, they affect alpha beta. Fab crab, alpha beta. And since they only have the letter A, they affect galactosidase, which only has the letter A. Now if you reach Goucher's disease, that has a letter U, G-A-U-C-H-E-R. I don't confuse it with the galactosidases. It has a letter U, therefore it affects glucosidase. For the glycogen storage diseases, for example, McCardell's disease and Hurst's disease. McCardell starts with the letter M, therefore it affects muscle phosphorylase and Hurst affects liver. So M, McCardell's muscle phosphorylase. Hurst, liver phosphorylase. Hurst, liver. I just, I use those kind of cues. This also works with classifications of things like drugs and volatile oils and so on. Another method is using music or using songs. If you're kind of artistic, this works. So I had an artistic best friend and with her craziness and my craziness combined, we made some mnemonics that I will never forget. <laughs> so for example, for the Electromotive series, we use the chorus of the song, Alam nyo yung Kapag tumibok ang puso Ayun. Don't judge my voice, guys. I've been I was like shouting just uh, the other night because, well, hello. Um, yeah, I won um, Miss Kaliska. So using that tune, we're able to memorize the electromotive series. So it starts like. Lika kanamat a zinker fekoni tau. Third method is creating a mental image as much as possible like even in charts I don't I try not to memorize things so for example um, for the colors of the elements when put through a non-luminous flame or through cobalt glass it's kind of a story but just just to create a mental image okay so calcium makes up our bones right mostly they make up our bones and bones are the structural component of the human body the structural component of houses are bricks, and bricks are red, brick red. Now if you have a house, of course you have a window, and the window is glass, so if you look through the glass window, you see the grass outside, and what color is the grass? Light green. So that's how I remember that calcium, um, when put under the non-luminous flame, is brick red, and then when it's viewed through cobalt glass, it's light green. It may seem complicated, but it's just it's just creating that mental image. So when you read or when you hear calcium and then the question being asked is about the flame color, then that mental image pops up in your head. This also really helped me in pharmacology because there's this 
uh, website. It's called Picmonic. I'll give you the link down below. This is a YouTube site as well. I think they have their own site as well. And then they just create amazing pictures um, filled with things about drug classifications or even for other medical areas for certain conditions. And I think they cover even more topics now. You should definitely visit their site. Or you just go to Google and for example for the cholinergic syndrome or the anticholinergic syndrome you search it and then the images will pop out and you just base your mental image off of those images. The fourth method is storytelling and I'm just going to show you some examples from my teacher during the board exam, his name is Sir Lois. He would create sentences or sort of stories that would have clues in them to the different classifications for pharmacognosy. It's also kind of related to having a mental image. So there were mnemonics for the cardiac glycosides and based off of his mnemonics I also created some of my own and also for the volatile oils. There was even a mental image or like a story for the ketone volatile oils. Imagine you and your kitten Ketone, camping, camphor, in a faraway land, caraway. You brought some buchi, buchu, and you camped under a leaf, setter leaf. And you didn't notice that the leaf had a lot of worms on it, wormwood. And you didn't notice either that in this faraway land, there were men or men with spears who were after you. Spears, spearmen. It's kind of weird, but it actually helps mm -hmm. like I remember that even without looking at a copy I literally I don't have notes with me right now this is all impromptu and the fifth method that I use a lot is the method of loci the memory palace method they call it they also call it um, the journey method or the house method so it's simply you choosing a location or a certain journey that you've been on before and that you remember really well and associating each part with something that you have to memorize. So that's why you always see me talking about and telling you guys, advising you guys to start sticking your notes around your house because you would know your way around the house even if the power was out, even it was if it was dark, you would know where the shoes go you would know where the TV is, you would know where the dining table is, you know where the things are even if you're not there. You completely remember things. So use that to your advantage. I did. Like, I walk through my house, I know that when I step through the front door, <laughs> my boards were a year ago and I still remember it until now. If I walk through my front door, on my left I have the antipsychotics and the antidepressants and I remember the different generations and the SSRIs and the SNRIs and then on the right I have module 1, I have inorganic chemistry and then on my brother's door I have pharmacognosy, glycosides and volatile oil classifications on top then some tests and then biochem and then on my door I have module 6, specifically microbiome only because in my room, in my room, behind the bed on the bed space I have module 6 Q and QC and then also when I enter my room on the left, I have um, the steroidal hormones and the thyroid hormones. Specifically on my eldest brother's closet, I have some formulas, Fried Scowlings and Clarks and the clearance and infusion rate. And on and by the way, I'm not pointing at anything because I'm not even in my room. I'm in, um, I'm in a hotel room right now in Pakolod. So yeah, and on that closet, I have the group anions, group cations. And on the fridge, on posted on the left side of the fridge, I have the groupings for cephalosporins as well as penicillins. So, as you can see, that method is super effective. I so want you guys to try it. So those were the five main methods of memorizing that I truly believe are really effective. Of course, there are more out there and whatever works for you, you should follow that because that's your learning style and that's what's best for you. But I still hope that you guys can apply my methods and my techniques and I hope this really helped you guys. So thank you so much for watching. Again, please like and share and subscribe to my channel. And let me know down in the comments below if I can help you guys with some more things or if you guys just want to share something with me. 
thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Every time you kiss me, every time I want you. Every time you kiss me, every time I want you, I'm a little bit insane about.